So we are in the uh, heart of Mong Kok. Mong Kok is the district just north of Yaomate where the Leung Ting Gym was, where we had our tour on Monday. Um, it's actually not pronounced Mong Kok in Cantonese, it's pronounced Wong Kok. This is the area where Grandmaster Yip Man lived in the last part of his life. We are gonna go over this road here, which means we're actually gonna have to go up and use this overpass because you cannot, at least to my recollection, cross this street here directly. So we gotta go up on that overpass cross and then we're literally going to be right in front of Grandmaster Yip Man's home uh, which is 149 Tung Choi Street if you remember the video you can see on YouTube where he's doing the form shortly before he passed away that was shot right there then we're going to go a little bit further I think there's a section that sells goldfish and stuff there's some really cool things there and then we're going to look at the Wing Chun Athletic Association from the outside and then from there we're going to cut a left and go to Bruce Lee's final home famous video of him on the wooden dummy was shot there on the 11th floor the wooden dummy still there the place was um uh, his son yip ching was still living there but yip ching just passed away about two years ago so i don't know currently who lives there um but uh yeah that is the place so this is quite literally uh months hood i have a uh his when he formed his association in 72 i have the a copy of the record that's how i got his address wow wow and also this is the proof that yip man spelled his name with a fucking y all right not ip man but yip man all right ninth look. floor ninth floor look so it's probably this one either this or this oh i have to guess this one's snappier you know with classier this is more yip man like goldfish and or goldfish related accessories this is the street to go to why would i want goldfish accessories well if you have goldfish you need goldfish accessories right? oh not to eat okay okay no not to eat of course we oh. mean for pets oh okay who eats goldfish yeah of course you go eat it oh my god i don't know Dorado, no, eh? no that's not a goldfish that oh. goldfish is like a nemo type of fish oh that's a goldfish, goldfish. Buildings are more or less the same. So this this area of Hong Kong, if uh, either Bruce Lee or Yip Man were to come in forward in time to 2023, would still be entirely recognizable as, as the same neighborhood. Oh, cool. Whereas other parts of Hong Kong would not. If if, if uh, either Bruce Lee or Yip Man had come to the the peak last night with us, they would have been blown away because that's not at all what Hong Kong looked like. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I remember watching Nathan Road in the 70s, there was like this black and white picture and it looked like something else. Yeah, Nothing the bu buildings are all much people. lower. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, they're doing, looks like they're doing some renovations on the building, so it's completely covered in scaffolding. But uh, I'll show you here, as this is the iconic sign, the Wing Chun Athletic Association spelled with a V. All right, uh, which was right here on this corner. Uh, that is, uh, one sign on this side, one sign on the other. And uh, for those of you who have seen the, um, uh, I have this in my school, the interview with uh, Grandmaster Yip Man, those uh, couplets, the, the calligraphy that's on the wall, which was uh, uh, done by Wong Sun Ang and dedicated by Tang Tan. But now it's basically an association used by a number of different Wing Chun Sifus. So there's not one guy who runs it. Every night they have different Sifus under the Yip Man lineage teaching. So Monday night might be Wong Sun Lung Sun. Tuesday night might be a student of Yip Ching. And so I have some connections with some of them. 
but uh, you can't just like show up because you don't know who's teaching and like they might be like, why the hell are you here? The adopted nephew of Lam Sai Wing. Lam Sai Wing was the most famous student of Wong Fei Hong. If you've ever watched any Kung Fu movies, you've definitely heard about it. Um, Sammo Hung played Lam Sai Wing in the, mo the movie Magnificent Butcher. And the real Lam Sai Wing was Lam Jo Sibu. Lam Jo started learning from uh, Lam Sai Wing when he was very young. And by the time he was 16, he was so good that Lam Sai Wing let him start teaching uh, for him here in Hong Kong. And he was probably one of the most prolific Kung Fu masters in Hong Kong. By the 40s, they already had hundreds of students and they had a main branch on the Kowloon side and one main branch on the Hong Kong side. Lam Jo himself was based on the Hong Kong side. But you have to imagine, he was so successful as a Kung Fu master in those days that he had two very prominent locations in Hong Kong, which shows you how, how popular he was at that time. And uh, Max Sibu comes from that line. Uh, Lam Jo lived, I think, he lived past 100. He passed away in like, 2009, 2008. And until his dying day, he was still extremely strong <coughs> and uh, very energetic. You can see videos of Lam Jo online and see like what a stout and robust dude he was pretty much until the end. And he was the one who really expanded Hongar's curriculum to include uh, forms outside of Hongar. He even included northern style forms that created two-man sets because he had a, um, a background in Chinese opera. So he took the classical Hongar <coughs> forms and he kind of made them a little more theatrical. And uh, uh, so anyway, he's kind of an OG of Chinese uh, martial arts. There's only on the floor, which is the floor? It's the one there where you see the black Chinese writing going across there, the bigger one, not the oh, okay. uh, uh, not the one on the side, the one there on the middle. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay. Thanks. Which technically translates to the Langzhou Health School, which is a euphemism for ass-kicking martial arts, okay? All right. But he was such a low-level guy, Bruce was like, you know, it, it, would, it would damage me to even fight this guy and win because he's like a nobody, right? And so I, uh, but I had been, but it, the people said yes, they did fight. Other people said no, they didn't. Um, and so I was told that Leo Chi Kang might know something because he was friends with Dan Sang. And supposedly the fight between Bruce Lee and Lao Tai Chun happened at Dan Sang's home. So when I met uh, Master Leo, of course, he couldn't really speak. His wife was really doing most of the talking, uh, which I can relate. Um, and so I, uh, I asked him, I said, uh, so uh, Leo Sibu, like, uh, did Bruce Lee and Lao Tai Chun have a fight? And he said, yes. And I said, uh, how do you know? And he said, I was there. And I said, did it, where did it happen? He said, it happened at Tang Sang's home. And I said, when was that? And he told me the day. And he said, I went up there with a few others and we saw it and it was over very quickly. And then before I had a chance to ask him the next question, his wife looked at him and mind you, he had had a stroke so he doesn't move said, you told me you were going to play mahjong on that day. <laughs> and that was in 1972 and this when I saw him was 2014. And you just saw this old Kung Fu master was like, oh shit. Almost 50 years later he had gotten caught. All right? And so, and, and he kind of laughed it off and I said, so, the Ocebu who won the fight and he says, oh, Lao Tai Chun and Bruce Lee are both my friends, so I won't say anything. And, I, and then I said, well, could you tell me who won? And he said, no, I'm sorry. Could you tell me who lost? Oh, sorry. And that was it, and I never got an answer. But after I left, the president at that time of the Hong Kong Chinese Martial Arts <laughs> Association said that Leo Sibu did tell him, maybe when his wife wasn't around, he's a little more open. And he said that uh, basically uh, Lao Tai Chun, who was a boxer, challenged Bruce and uh, Tang Sang had a boxing ring in his backyard, which he used to train Wing Chun fighters for full contact contests in Fan Lake, where Yip Man's grave is all the way up there. And he said that uh, Lao Tai Chun come out, came out and uh, Bruce stopped him with one kick and broke his ribs and uh, <laughs> gave him a money to pay for his medical bills and told the people who were there not to say anything because he didn't want Lao Tai Chun's reputation as a film actor to be damaged. 
So the reason why not a lot of people know about that fight is because Bruce Lee didn't want him to lose face after uh, he was defeated by Bruce. And that was not the first time such a story had happened, which is pretty crazy. So anyway, every time I'm in this area, of course, I don't know for, for sure, but I'm pretty sure Leo Sibu has since passed. But every time I'm here, I remember that day. And I remember that no matter how, how long, your wife will always catch yeah. you slipping and we'll let you know. <laughs> dragons and Hong means like uh, something like a pond so Kowloon Tong is basically like nine dragon ponds and this area of Hong Kong is unique because as you've most likely noticed most of Hong Kong are uh, residential apartments not really so many freestanding homes but this is a section of Kowloon which is mostly homes which meant this is where the rich people live okay if you were on the Kowloon side and you had money you lived over here, which is why when Bruce finally convinced Raymond Chow to pay him some of that money that he earned from his movies, um, he bought a home over here. So this is kind of considered, uh, I suppose you could say, like the Bel Air of, uh, of Hong Kong, or at least of the Kowloon side. So you're gonna notice as we go in there, more freestanding homes, all of the fancy private schools were here. So that's why, although Bruce lived all the way down in, uh, in Yao Mate, or sorry, Jim Sa Choi, because his family had a little bit of money, he went to the fancy private schools up here when he started high school. And then later when uh, he came back as a movie star, he was first living in a very ruddy apartment just a few blocks away. So when he made Big Boss and Fist of Fury, he was living in a tiny local shitty Hong Kong apartment just a few blocks that way. And on the success of those two films, and uh, with a little prodding on Raymond Shelley, hey, you earned a lot of money from those movies I made. Maybe you could throw some of that my way. Raymond actually paid for that mansion, so Bruce did not really own it. Uh, the relationship between Bruce Lee and Raymond Chow was a little bit like Suge Knight and Tupac, where he was not really paying him what he was worth, but he would like throw gifts at him, like, here's a bunch of gold chains, now go have fun. All right, here's a car, now leave me alone. Meanwhile, he's earning all of his money from that. driving schools to teach the driving lessons here in this uh, in this neighborhood so you will see a lot of student drivers so be very careful when crossing the streets have you ever been to his other apartment that you were talking about for I've been in front of it I mean it's, it's a very local Hong Kong style apartment because probably it is still the same that it was exactly back the then. same exactly the same yeah. yeah that's cool total typical small Hong Kong apartment wow. wow so you know you think of him as a movie star when he was making those, those films and he was there with uh, uh, Linda and Shannon and Brandon in a tiny, wow. very local Hong Kong, we gotta flip the switch for the water heater kind of place. <laughs> you know, not living uh, in any, any semblance of luxury. Of course, the house has changed quite a bit. Uh, it was recently demolished and rebuilt, but the new house that was rebuilt was rebuilt more or less on the same spot as the old one. It's still a two-floor home. It's got the same structure, yeah. More or less. Um, uh, they changed the the wall. So it the wall on the, outside, the and on the outside yeah. too, yeah. Oh, this is it? It's so yeah, different. This is it? Damn. Oh, man. It's so different. Yeah, they changed it quite a bit. Wow. The house has been rebuilt. It's actually much nicer than it used to be. Oh, it's nothing like it was. This 11-room, two-story villa with its small Japanese-style garden may not have turned heads in Hollywood, but for crowded Hong Kong, it was nothing short of a palace. There was room for the family and friends to relax.
that uh, Queen's Elizabeth Hospital was sitting there while they're waiting to get some more information, uh, official press release. And that reporter decided to go for a little walk and he went to the ambulance bay and he saw a clipboard that had the list of where all the ambulances had gone and the addresses where they picked up whatever. And he kind of looked and saw that the ambulance that had picked up Bruce Lee did not pick him up at 41 Cumberland Road, but rather uh, 70 something Beacon Hill Road. And they were like, hmm, isn't that the address of Betty Ting Pei? And that's when the reporter made that announcement and uh, Raymond and Linda were forced to amend their first statement. So that is, in reality, that was the real conspiracy. And that's part of the reason why uh, so many people didn't believe whatever they were saying, because the thing they lied about is they didn't want people to know that he died at Betty's place. They wanted it to be a uh, an innocent stroll in the Japanese garden at 41 Cumberland Road. And once that was found out to be a lie, then they didn't want to believe anything that was said, even if what they later said was completely true, that initial statement was false and that uh, dramatically reduced Raymond Chow and Linda Lee's credibility. And that was just, they didn't want them to know where Bruce had collapsed. And it, if not for one reporter who looked that up, um, anyone who said, no, you know, Bruce Lee didn't die there. He actually went over there, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever, of course you want to say that, but that's actually what happened. Is it Fucking amazing. Yeah, amazing? I mean, I've never had an egg tart to compare, but they say if this is one of the best, and I don't know if it is or not, but it's pretty incredible. What are you Thank you. Hello. Hi. Uh, Brun, yeah, I'm gonna put this there. Fuck that kid. Yeah, you're gonna hate it, I know. But this is really hot. Really hot. Okay, not yet. Wait. Wait. I'm pretty sure no Portuguese guy's gonna like this. Probably not. Because we have the best custard cake in the world. Apparently, that's not what I said, but yeah. Wait. I went there, it's great. Oh, you know what? Someone no? just sent me a yeah. recommendation. It's terrible, right? Is it terrible? No. It has nothing to do with ours. Yeah. Ours are much better. Yeah. But, but is it good, though? Yeah, we have to open our minds. You can eat. You, you can eat. Yeah, open. it's good. It's good. Be, o it's be open. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'll be open minded. So it's pretty terrible, right? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Spando Ballet. Hi guys. Hello. Open? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Come in. Oh, you're open? Yeah. Thank you so much. Did you come here just for this or what? Yeah. No. The, we, we saw, saw the, the we saw the sign. Okay, man. Oh look, Jeff So where are you guys from? Portugal. Oh, okay. Welcome. What are you doing in Hong Kong? Oh, we're, nice. we're here for a Bruce Lee tour. Oh, shit! <laughs> wow! <laughs> that, that's the... Uh... We're nerds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know he passed away, huh? <laughs> like 50 years ago? Yeah. yeah, man. That's a long time. But his yeah. legacy is like yesterday, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So are you into martial arts or just nerds? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, we are. Okay, that's it. You look more martial than <laughs> most of them, but I wouldn't screw with him because he looks <laughs> like... bigger than me. Yeah, it's not about yeah. size, right? <laughs> Golden age hip-hop. What's the Nin golden age 1986, oh, 1997. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> if, if, you, if you went like Kendrick Lamar, I, I would, oh, yeah, I would, I know. That's I would get out in five seconds. See? Golden Beastie age boy. See? Oh, Golden no, age of hip-hop? You know why I put it there? Because there's no space there. <laughs> see? 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 Shut up. He doesn't like Beastie Boys. Boys know yeah. Other yeah, Dr. Dre, The Chronic. Dr. Dre. Yeah, this is a great album. Public Enemy. Public Enemy number one. Hello, 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 hello. Paul's Boutique, Beastie Boys. Brand new Brand Nubian. Nubian. Good I like it. So you, you got me trust. Stuff, huh? Yeah, of course. I'm the old geezer between these two. <laughs> Cam D. Cam D. Yeah, so balloon mine stuff. Funny, this guy from the record store just told me that he went to school with Brendan Lee. He was like, oh yeah, I was in Colin Tong in the schools and I saw his mother coming and everybody was like, oh, he's the son of Bruce Lee, he's the son of Bruce Lee. And I was like, so do you remember him? He was like, no, I was six years old. I don't remember if he was a good guy or not. Next time he tells that story, I hope he says that, no, he was amazing. And we, we played marbles together and I, once I fought him and I beat his ass. But then he became bigger, and with all the steroids and stuff, he kicked my ass. By steroids, I mean Wing Chun. 
right? It's like a steroid. So here's Jim and Ellie. Too busy looking good. Um, originally, this part was meant to be played by uh, an American actor called uh, Rodney Tarkington. And right before he was meant to fly to Hong Kong, he made the the deathless error of telling producer Greg Weintraub, "You're not paying me enough. You're exploiting me. I'm not going to do Enter the Dragon." This actually could be recut to be something of a gay love story. And Bruce Lee, get this footage. Yeah, this is. Thanks, I hate this. Hey there. Don't hey, unsee it. Get these girls away. <laughs> and later, when it when it's time to fight, it's another nunchuck guy. So they replaced him. Now this guy, get, guy coming up gets the drum solo from Inagada De Vida. Great. Now, again, it's one of the great shots in cinema history. When everybody else is fighting like crazy, Bruce is just standing there. Yeah. And it's just so powerful. And again, I think, you know, there's very few other actors that could pull this off. And um, it's, he's one of the few actors in repose. is as interesting or more interesting than a bunch of guys jumping, 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 jumping all around him. Now, what people don't realize is that actually uh, Sekin had a musical background, so he actually burst into song at this point. And it goes, ha, 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 ha. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, man. You can never unhear it. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> one more, one more time. I'll get my voice. I'll get my voice. There you go, folks. Oh. Some of you obviously are my students, some of you are from the WT line, some of you have done no Wing Chun, and some of you are from completely different Wing Chun lineages from Lu Yip Man. So of course, don't worry about doing everything perfect. This is like, a, I'm gonna just kind of teach a regular class. If there's anything that's a little bit difficult or anything that you're having a hard time with, just take it nice and easy. No one is judging anyone here. Uh, we have a mixed group. Um, I have a few of my uh, higher level guys here to help you out if you uh, need some uh, you know, special help or anything like that. Is there anyone here in this group who has done no Wing Chun before? No Wing Chun, fantastic. My favorite student to teach, all right? <laughs> um, we're gonna start with the Siu Nam Tao form, and then we're going, actually no, we're gonna start with the Wing Chun warm up, 
and then we're going to do the seam no tail form and then I'm going to do some basic exercises. Yeah.